Each week, we take a moment, sit down, and talk about things going on at the road in what we call the Road Detour. Well, welcome back to the Road Detour. It's been a while since we had a Road Detour, but we got a lot of exciting things lined up, and uh, we got Natalie and Grace and Elijah with me, and uh, let's talk a little Christmas. What was the, the best thing you did at Christmas? So you guys understand people are watching, right? Yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of we did a lot of traveling. We go see my mom and uh what's nice is her parents live close to my mom, so uh travel's not too too crazy. Um but it was it was a really good Christmas this year. Um boys had a lot of fun and got what to see What was the number one thing on on the kids Christmas list? Uh, Bo, anytime we saw a commercial was I want that. Everything. I want that. So, everything was yeah. on there. <laughs> everything was on there. But uh, he loved this little uh, transformer. It's a little car, and it uh, you press a button, it flips into a scorpion. Oh, yeah. And so he is all about scorpions right now. And, yeah. So crazy, crazy stories. When I, uh, I was working for Sandia, I resigned, came home, started school again uh, to pursue the ministry and, you know, working every job I could work. One of the jobs I had, I sat inside of a wooden Christmas tree. I need to be really careful telling this story, don't I? Uh, yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was I a big old giant that. wooden Christmas tree is all it was. <laughs> I have no idea and, uh, what the story is. And uh, it was in, in a store called Roses, and it had a wheel. And I sat in this box, like on the ground in this box, in this wheel, and I could turn this where it looked at people. And I had a microphone and I talked. So that's 1983 and Transformers just came out. Oh. And I would sit in that tree and go, Transformers, more than meets the eye. And these little kids would all freak out and stuff. They've been around that long, dude. Yeah, and this is, well, we, we did the off-brand VTech version, but it's still good. Yeah. <laughs> And he still loves it. Yeah, he does. What about Christmas at the Routon House? It was very relaxing this year. Um, Dustin's the only child. Um, my family, it was one day we spent together, which was great. Um, but then the rest of the week, we really just had downtime. the five of us and enjoyed some good downtime at home. Mm. Hey. Hey. Anything special about your Christmas? Oh, I added a few extra events this year. But other than that, nothing too special. Like parties or what are we talking about? Oh, I know what it is. You Go had ahead. some extra people that some you extra spent people. time with. Okay. Yeah. Like another family. Another family. This was my first Christmas with my boyfriend. Oh. And it was a lot of fun. Um, he gave me probably the funniest Christmas present. What, I got what? A, Which oh. was? I, <laughs> I got a Bluey sweater because I'm obsessed with the show Bluey. Rightfully so. I'm a preschool associate. And so anyways, I got a Bluey sweater and you will be seeing it on Sunday. Because I'm gonna wear it. <laughs> All right. Else I? right. Best thing you got. Best gift you got. We don't do gifts. It may. I don't know. You guys may not do gifts either. Uh, we try to discourage our kids every year from doing gifts, but typically they try to do something anyway. But Steph and I, we don't. We haven't since we've been married. We've never given a Christmas gift because life is good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys do gifts? Yeah. Um, I. I, I, I'm not very good at the, the gift giving. Uh, I don't pay attention throughout the year. Like what, what is, what is, Oh, I know one thing. And then it's a scramble at the end. The The perfume, I didn't do, no, I didn't do, I got her, I went to Nike and got her some platform Nikes. And so, uh, what she really liked is just the wrong size. So, uh, (laughs) you're really not paying attention. Did you go to the closet, look in the (laughs) shoe. Well, see, I don't, I don't think about it like. I'd already <laughs> Please left. Please tell me it was too small. I, uh, yeah, it was too small. It was too small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but my favorite, the favorite gift I forgot was uh, was this jacket. It was a, it's a nice Levi jacket with a hood, and um, it's, it'll be something that keeps me warm. It's like kind of a replacement jacket because I have one that has a big old rip in the armpit. So wear that thing out, bro. Oh yeah. What about you guys? So Dustin surprised me with a Ninja Creamy this year, which I was telling Rick about earlier. It it makes ice cream. And Jason, uh, his family has one, and so I'm getting all the recipes from him. But if you have (laughs) one or know some good ice cream recipes, pass them my way because we're trying out. It's like ice cream every night at our house right now. Post up the Ninja Creamy recipes, right? And Ninja, we do take sponsorships. (laughs) 
And if it gets out there, well, uh, we're we're ramping up for the new year. There have been some just incredible things um, that have been a part of our planning. We're, we're going to start a new series called Transformation uh, because the goal of following Jesus is to not be what we've always been. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it never has dawned on me because we, we kind of make this decision. Everybody comes to Jesus to get to heaven. Um, and almost that's a cheap sale. Hmm. I mean, heaven heaven's a good thing. But if you don't like following Jesus here, you're probably not going to like spending eternity with him. Yeah. And so, uh, so, so we come, and then there's almost a separate moment when we decide that we have to be transformed, that this pursuit of Jesus is about becoming something different uh, than we have been, and that's a hard decision. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had a conversation with, with one of my kids about uh, that's just really – after being away from God for a good while, kind of starting this journey back, and uh, we were talking about personality and, and the old God made me this way, right? Uh, God made me loud. God made me funny. God made me... And I said, well, you're mistaking a natural personality for God. And uh, and we, we begin to talk about what it means to give those things to God, which is, again, transformation, and it was surrender. And I said, so have you ever, have you ever surrendered your personality to mm. God? Yeah. Because to just say I'm ugly, b- brutal, and blunt is not following Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know which kid that is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was this moment when we talked of like a realization of I have never looked at God and said, you can have that part of me. Mm-hmm. That's transformation. Yeah, because I do think there's a part of your personality that God has gifted you a certain way for a purpose. And so, yeah, you might be honest, brutal, and brunt, uh, blunt, but uh, you don't have to be brutal or blunt necessarily, but using that to you know share the gospel a certain way or be able to engage with certain people. Um, yeah, yeah that, I get that. that God called me to be the truth speaker in everybody's life is probably uh, an error in your own objective view of yourself. I, I read a book by Jen Wilkins called um, None Like Him. And it talks about all the different characteristics of God. And there are some characteristics that we can um, reflect of his, but there are some that are just his and his alone. Mm. And he is immutable. He's unchangeable. He does not change. We were made to change. We were made to grow. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were made to transform. I'm using one of your statements in this transformation series. Matter of fact, uh, it's you cannot love what you do not know. Yeah, you, yeah, you shared that with me, and it's in the sermon this week. Hmm. Sure is. So we're talking about this journey to to become like Jesus, not just to be content with what we are. And, and one of the ways that we believe we do that is with our Bible reading plan and and the discipleship wheel. And we're going to introduce a new version of that this Sunday. Uh, so be sure and be here. Pick up your wheel. Uh, we're going to be using it for the next four weeks as we're going to talk about what it's like on our end to go through this transformation process as we follow Jesus. Uh, the crazy good news is, you, you know, it, it's fun to be excited about your church mm-hmm. and what God is doing. And uh, we have uh, a book called Foundations uh, for those who prefer the book to our Bible reading plan. They follow the same reading pattern, but we've sold 650 of those books to people who are like, I'm in. Uh, that doesn't count the people who don't use the books. That's just the people who bought the books to assist them in that. That's really, That's awesome. really exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and we have a kid's book, too. And I don't think that that number is even <clears throat> included in that. But we do have a kid's book that follows the same plan. Um, you know, we'll read Luke chapter 2 today, and the kids will read just a couple of verses within Luke chapter 2. Um, but it follows the same overall plan and just helps them kind of focus in on something that's a little more um, Not 60 doable verses. for a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So grab one of those for your yes, elementary age kids. Oh, it so, was a long one. Gosh. One of the one of the principles behind reading God's word correctly is reading digestible bites. A child a child can't digest spiritually digest a meal that big like we've been talking about. So you you make it manageable right. and and digestible. And you guys have a book, right? For yeah, the, it's the exact same as the adult. Um, and so we do have. Uh, I think actually we're just using the adult one. We had the Old Testament one for teens, um, but found out they're the exact same thing. So we just were like, get you an adult book. And I love that our families can 
come together and talk about the same thing. You know, I, and I saw this, and, and he posted it, but not everybody follows, but Matthew took what we published here at the church, the the checkbox of all the reading and the explanation of the BRP, they blew it up and they put it on the refrigerator for all of their kids. And every day before their kids get any... Uh, uh, screen time or... Yeah, screen time, internet time. time. Yes, Snacks. they have to check the box. <laughs> food, yeah. food, <laughs> water. Right. You can't go to the bathroom. Yeah. No, you can't live on bad. bread alone, y'all. Gotta have <laughs> you have to check the box uh, to, to that you've done it. And the kids, this is a great idea for your young kids that can't read, listen. Mm. They hit the uh, button on the, the Bible app, and it will read it to them and at least read a portion of it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And our young adults... We got a young adult ministry that is uh, kicked off. They had uh, 39, is that right, at the Christmas party? Young adults, if you're looking for a place to plug in and grow. I uh, was talking earlier with, with some of our staff that, there, to me, there are three components um, that really maximize the Bible reading plan. There is, you got to read, right? Uh, you got to read. And if you don't do anything but read, that's good. But if you read and journal, which is the second component, the, the impact's exponential. Mm-hmm. I win. 60 years, never journaled. It made me uncomfortable. Mm. I, I don't know any word to say it. It wasn't, it just absolutely made me uncomfortable. I, maybe I was afraid someone would read the weaknesses in my life. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but it did. But once I started, uh, and now it's as regular as, as, you know, getting up and doing your exercise or, or eating a meal or whatever. Uh, and then the third one is connect with other people who are also reading and journaling so that we can grow together. Uh, and that is, for those who are doing it, that is that creates an intimacy, a true spiritual intimacy um, that changes life. Yeah, I don't quite like writing at all. Uh, I don't know if it's just a, it's time consuming or I've got so much I want to write about that I just it takes so much time. But I do enjoy sitting face to face and talking to someone about it. Yeah. And that's what I enjoy. I know Jason and I, we, we'll get together and talk sometimes. Um, I've got a couple of students that I'll communicate with. So, hey, before I put y'all on the spot, have it, have y'all done your BRP today? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. I've read it. I haven't journaled yet. Okay, oh, you, you have read it in journal. Mm-hmm. What'd you write about today? I wrote about <clears throat> it, it's a little similar to the uh, chapter one, but talking about how God used the lowly and the faithful, um, and so He He used the shepherds and, and uh, spoke with the heavenly host. Uh, he used uh, Zacharias who. Uh, I, I don't know that he was a priest necessarily, but he's he, an just an old man who was looking for the consolation of Israel. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, and then Anna also, she was a prophetess um, who was uh, telling people about Jesus for those who wanted uh, redemption. And so just and talking to the other thing I mentioned in there was how long uh, they waited, waited mm. and just being faithful through the waiting. I wrote a weird one today. Um I'm reading through this, and I'm just it just dawns on me that none of these people were special. They were just living life. Mm-hmm. Mary was just living the life of a 13, 14-year-old girl until an angel showed up. Joseph, just living life, trying to pay the bills <laughs> until a dream. Shepherds, just keeping sheep until God showed up. And, and most of our life, most of our life is just getting up and living life. Mm-hmm. It's being a parent, being a good mate. Uh, doing your job well, it's just doing life. But then there are moments, and, and you may not have but one, maybe two in your life where God shows up. And when he shows up, it, sh- it shifts everything for the rest of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Mary's life shifted, Joseph's life shifted, Shepherd's life, everybody's life. And, and I wrote about those moments in my life, the call on my life to walk away from a career, pursue ministry, the death of my wife, mm-hmm. were moments when God just really showed up and, and changed the course of things. So anyway, it was different for me. But I love asking that question because everybody— Very similar. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Anything else, Grace? Huh? Well, something I was just thinking about when you were talking about the three components of this BRP, reading— journaling and then connecting with other people about it is that we're talking about being transformed and in order to be transformed we have to do hard things and do things that make us uncomfortable just like how a lot of times for me like it's easy for me to sit down and like 
hey God, me again. Da 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 da. Amen. Hey people, la 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 la. This is what I learned. But sometimes the aspect of sitting down, reading, and diving into the physical words of Scripture is more difficult for me. And so I have to sit down and work a little harder at that, mm -hmm. and then get to do things I'm more comfortable in. And a lot of times, one or two of those things are difficult for us. But if we want to truly be transformed to be more like Jesus, and again, not that these are like written out and this is the 11th, 12th, and 13th commandment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but just that if you are pursuing Jesus, if you're wanting to help others pursue Jesus, sometimes you've got to put the hard work in yourself. I would, I, I like that. Yeah. I, I like that for ministry um, is that, that you, you can't get by with doing what comes naturally. And that's what you're saying. Yeah. These things are easy. It's easy for me to write, right? It's not easy for you no, to write. No. So, so we have to be careful just defaulting to what is natural and easy and, and do the work that's required to be transformed. And, you know, like I, I think about this in your whole life. And um, again, like reading, sometimes more difficult for me. Worship through song, easy for me. But when I take the time to sit down and read, sometimes like it hits me almost harder than when it's easy for me to worship through song. Because it took a lot of work for me to do that. And I saw the Lord show up or I learned something new about his character. Right. Um, and it just makes me fall in love with the depth of who God is even more. That's good. That's good. And as a church, we've, we're going to try to help them with those components. Mm -hmm. We've given you a reading plan. Um, we have given you the book if you are interested in that to help you journal. And then we want to help you connect. Mm -hmm. The men have already had the BRP groups going now for months. Mm -hmm. um, very successful with that. And we're starting a women's group. All right. They're going to meet uh, 14th of January at 5 o'clock in the foyer. And they're going to divide up into groups very similar. Their, their discussion's probably going to be a little different than what the men do. Uh, but they're going to start uh, holding each other accountable and growing together. Yeah. So if you've struggled maybe finding a group to be in or, you know, you've done the BRP on your own and you just think in order to make it more beneficial, you'd like to be part of a group, we'll get you hooked up. I think, and I'm a man speaking out of turn about women, but I do believe yeah, I know. Well, I, just, <laughs> Think I believe that. that if you surveyed women, that one of the things they would tell you is missing from their life or most desired is meaningful connection with other women um, and providing them that opportunity, not just to talk about a book, a reading club or the whatever. Uh, the kid, Yeah. <laughs> but to talk about talk about. And I definitely something. think in different stages of your life as a mm -hmm. woman, as a mother, as a wife, like there's lonely stages in there where you're just busy and doing a lot of stuff and just don't have time for that. And so this will maybe help you carve out a little time for right. yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Elijah, any last words? Go Tigers. Oh. Go Tigers. <laughs> Go Tigers. Hey, why don't you guys drop in the, in the comments who you think is going to win the national championship? Oh, right? yeah. Right. Washington or Michigan, right? One of the two. Neither one uh, of them are Oklahoma teams. Yeah, so. <laughs> neither one of them have a whole lot of interest around here, but if you're uh, cheering for one, let us know who it is. Cool. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Be here Sunday. Hey, uh, a couple things you can do. We anticipate big crowd. Park away from the, the best parking spots, right? We fill up the grass, fill it all up, fill up everything. Uh, remember to leave seats in the auditorium on the end. If there's an empty seat, slide down. Keep the aisle seats open so that we can fill them. And if there's overflow, it will be in the foyer. There will be people helping uh, put chairs up and put seats out. We've been using those for the last couple of weeks with some of the special services we've done. Uh, but, hey, if you're a member, you're a regular tender, jump in and help us. Right? If you see something needs to be done, just jump on it. Let's get it done because we are family. We're spiritual family. We're all here about the same purpose. We love you guys. Can't wait to see you this Wednesday at WOW. It's going to be a family worship on Wednesday and then Sunday morning. Love you guys. See you then.